thyroid eye disease is a very broad spectrum of problems and it can be as mild as having a slightly uncomfortable sore eye uh, right through to swelling around the eye which tends to push the eyeball forwards and also can avoid, involve the muscles and in involving the muscles it can lead to double vision and in those few but very serious cases it can lead to a compression of the nerve due to the swelling around the eye leading to loss of vision which needs urgent treatment. They notice a change in the colour vision uh, the colours become dimmer and the actual straight ahead vision may be also blurred and if those things happen then the patient must seek advice straight away because that means that there's, a, there's pressure on the optic nerve and the, the vision could be permanently damaged. We know it's normally associated with overactive thyroid in about 90% of patients but we also know that in at least 10% of patients there isn't a thyroid abnormality, so it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one relationship uh, with thyroid getting eye disease. Probably only 5-10% to 10 of patients with thyroid problems actually get eye disease. A lot of people ask me uh, where the thyroid gland is, and that includes doctors and medical students as well as patients. And the answer is it's in the neck, and the clue is the Adam's apple, so that bumpy bit of your neck there that most people can feel. That part is called the thyroid cartilage, but in fact the thyroid isn't there. It's quite a bit lower down. So it's in the low part of the neck. And in some older people, it's actually right down behind the breastbone. I think there's usually two groups of people who are worried about thyroid eye disease. There's the people who haven't got it, but are worried that it might develop. And there's the people who have got it, who worry that it's going to get worse. For people who haven't got it, I would say there's some reassurance that of people with the thyroid overactivity, Graves' disease, only perhaps a 1 in 10 people will get bad eye problems. It's impossible to tell when that could happen because it can come before the thyroid overactivity uh, at the same time or years later, but uh, it's unusual that it would happen. So just because another member of the family has been affected doesn't mean it's going to happen to you. It's rare that we see a whole family where many of them are affected. It's more common in women. Uh, certainly the thyroid overactivity is about five times more common in women. And the eye disease is about twice more common in women. In a nutshell, we don't know what the mechanism is. We haven't found a common antibody that, uh, or, or, or trigger that sets off thyroid and the eye disease. So we know that antibodies are, are um, important in, in creating these diseases and we tend to call them autoimmune diseases so something in your immune system starts making you get thyroid problems or the eye disease problems but we don't actually know which antibodies or what drives it and there's a lot of research going on to that but, that is, but we, we just don't know. The other major risk factor for thyroid eye disease is smoking so people who smoke tend to get worse disease and if you stop smoking that tends to improve and also there may be other triggers uh, or, or what we call drivers uh, that we don't quite understand such as uh, poor health. Certainly the other driver for disease is if your thyroid control is going up and down, i.e. you're being overactive one day, underactive another day, that makes eye disease uh, worse. It's important to remember that thyroid eye disease rarely, rarely affects your accuracy of vision. So it's not a disease that causes blindness in the most vast majority of people. What it does do is it causes disfiguring changes to your eyes, which are very disturbing, and it can cause double vision, which can make it very difficult to concentrate on what you're trying to look at. You can classify thyroid eye disease into mild, moderate and severe. So mild diseases that might get just slightly starey eyes, and the eye may look as though it's pushed forward. You can get swelling above the eyes and below the eyes, and the uh, white of the eye can become red and watery, um, and also patients can have uh, problems with eye movements so when they move their eyes especially looking up they can get pain and also the eye movements may uh, become abnormal such that they get double vision occasionally it can be very severe where you have just reduction in vision so actually the vision deteriorates that's quite uncommon um, and you have swelling around the eye often we find that it doesn't get worse it stays around the same uh, and uh, the appearances uh, seem to develop over a matter of weeks, uh, but then the disease often stabilizes. The whole disease uh, burns itself out, usually in a year or two, which is a long time, 
but then it's rare for it to become active again. So if that's some reassurance that if you like, it happens once.